If we want to start Kilkenny, which is a center for adult immigrants, um, the services are offered free of charge and the tutors volunteer their time. And I'm currently completing my master's in professional development for language education. And I can spell warmth. <laughs> now, um, so uh, the center where I work, we didn't have any means of placing the learners into levels. So they just come in and we sort of place them intuitively into classes or levels. So as part of my MA assignment, I decided to design a vocab size test. And I used EVP, by the way, for that. <laughs> so um, the test seemed to work just fine and it was practical. However, we soon felt that it needed to be complemented with some other form of assessment. So keeping that in mind, I decided to design an inset plan for informal, of assess uh, for informal assessment of speaking. Informal because of the low resources we had. It was not possible to conduct it personally on a one-to-one -one basis. So it would have to be done informally but the tutors would have to be trained. And I also had to bear in mind that the tutors had diverse backgrounds, um, different educational backgrounds. So um, I thought it would be easy, but it wasn't. And I had to put in a lot of work and a lot of time and planning. Um, I also had very limited time for this. It was just two hours that the tutors could spend. So I divided it into two sessions. So we'll move to the first session. So the first step would be to provide them with a springboard for assessment, to give them an idea of what they were going in for. Um, first and foremost was awareness of the special features of spoken language, because it differs so greatly from written language. Um, there's fillers, there's pauses, there's ellipses, incomplete sentences, vague language. The vocabulary differs so greatly <coughs> when we speak, so they had to be made aware of that. Um, next, I, design, I gave them a rough plan for assessment. So the first step in this direction was to have them outline the major syllabus objectives and align them with the assessment task, which I'll introduce them to later. And uh, giving them the option of assessing students in staggered cycles, maybe two or four students per week, so as not to overwhelm them. And recording performance, of course, with the student's permission for later rating. Next, um, I highlighted various modes of assessment, including individual, pair, and group tasks. Mm -hmm. And I also sort of uh, highlighted the pros and cons of each one. So for example, with group tasks, they'd be more economical and more practical, but they'd have to ensure that every student had a fair turn, or a turn which was long enough to be assessed. Um, mm -hmm. Next, I highlighted different tasks, including oral interviews, descriptions, role plays, stories and text retellings, Mr. Nestor, and video clips. Um, and finally, I gave them some tips for assessment, which would be um, the appropriacy of tasks for the levels, um, basing these tasks on activities that they used in class on a day-to-day -day basis, and also gauging the level of task difficulty by the number of events or the number of characters, and the provision of timely and appropriate feedback, highlighting the strengths and weaknesses of the learners' performances. Ah, now we come to the meaty part. So the scale for assessment that I designed was based on the common European framework of reference. And in order to help them to understand the scale, I needed to introduce the CFR to them in, very, um, in a very comprehensive but brief manner, because we could go on and on and on. So um, apart from the visual information that I presented, I also in, uh, included a very short but comprehensive video clip from the British Council. And that's the part when I actually saw people sitting up in their chairs and paying a lot of attention. So that worked very well. Um, next, I had to introduce them to the scale for assessment, but um, not just having them read it. They needed to be engaged with the scale, so I devised a gap fill familiarization activity. As you can see here, there are the <coughs> gaps, and they were given the choices at the end, and they did this in pairs. So um, a discussion was invited after this, and the right choices, we discussed the right choices. Moving on, ah, now it is time to set the standards to actually show them the performances which were depicted of different levels of the CEFR. So um, I used Cambridge English Assessment. Now um, the samples from Cambridge English Assessment can be used uh, there, um, by non-fee paying institutions. And um, what I did was I gave them the accompanying documentation and after each viewing, they just sort of highlighted 
the critical features of just one of the testes' performances, so as not to overwhelm them. So they focused on one of the testes, they highlighted the critical features in the documentation, and after each viewing, we discussed that performance, why it was a certain level, and clarifications were made. Moving on now. Next, it was, this was the second session now after about one week. And it was time to sort of apply the standards or apply what they'd learned. So um, I gave them the scale for assessment, but I asked them to highlight the important features of each level. So as to sort of recap what they'd done and to sort of comprehend the levels better. So they viewed the samples, once again from Cambridge English Assessment, and this time they identified the level of the performance on the assessment criteria. This was done in groups, discussion was invited. Um, after each viewing, we, clarifications were made as to why the performance was a certain level. Um, and finally, it was time for individual rating, but this was done anonymously. So it's not to put anybody on the spot. So they viewed the samples and they were asked to enter the ratings in this column under Rater 1. The second column would be used to enter the ratings from the experts of Cambridge English Assessment and the differences would be calculated to give us um, the correlation coefficient or put simply just the rate of agreement between the ratings done by the trainees and that done by the experts. All right, so um, how did I evaluate the sessions? So this was basically three tiered. I used the rate of scoring form which you just saw. So the rate of scoring form showed a correlation coefficient of 0.8 or let's say 80% which is reasonably satisfactory. Um, however, the levels B1 and B2, they were confused by, let's say, two of the participants. So that is something I'd have to work on later. Um, the results of the questionnaire were really positive. So all the participants agreed that they found the sessions useful, understood the main features of the speaking performances, <coughs> felt that they could use the scales to assess speaking, and found the ses uh, sessions useful and beneficial. And I asked them to do this anonymously. So, um, the field notes, yeah. So after each session, I just dot jotted down my observations. And this was compiled immediately after the session, so I wouldn't forget. So the field notes showed that the participants appeared to be, you know, engaged, and some of them made really valuable, well-informed comments and contributions. Finally, for the tips, now, first and foremost would be practicality, and especially the time. So the time that you, you know, decide to allocate to the training should be sufficient to cover the materials and it should be in keeping with the time available for training. So I just had two hours and I had to utilize each and every second. I had to shorten the video clips, I had to extract the useful bits from them. Um, next is awareness of trainees experience and knowledge. That is really important while designing the sessions. Um, if you don't keep that in mind, it may just all be over before it starts. Um, engagement, yeah. So make the sessions engaging, interacting, uh, interactive, use a variety of modes and try to cater to different learning styles. So visual learners, auditory learners, group learners, individual learners, and most importantly, comprehensibility. Avoid excessive use of jargon, language that they may not understand. Um, and try to divide the sessions into, you know, digestible chunks, I'd say. Next was evaluation, yeah. So your evaluation, uh, <coughs> try to have a three-pronged method, if you can. And it should be very clear and critical, not just a rosy picture. Because it has to feed into follow-up sessions or future training requirements. Um, <coughs> this is really important. Now, the scale that you use for assessment, don't just have the trainees read it. Try to engage, try to have them engage, uh, try to engage them with it cognitively as um, I try to do in the gap fill activity. Um, try to have the trainees rate in groups first before they rate individually. This will save a lot of work, time and effort because some differences will be ironed out and consensus usually, a consensus usually is reached. Um, anonymous data collection, invite honest feedback. And last but not least, check all equipment, which I must admit I overlooked. Things weren't just fine in the end, but I believe it's really important to do that.